All right, this video will explain the accommodation of the eye. So to begin, I'm just gonna go over the basic anatomy. And so we have the lens here. So if this is gonna be the eye, we've got the pupil, uh, we've got a lens, and we've got these suspensory ligaments called zonules, and then the ciliary body, which is gonna be a muscle on both sides. Um, since I can only draw in 2D, this is actually gonna be a ciliary muscle that's gonna encircle the whole lens. And that's gonna be an important subject to remember. So right now, uh, the eye is just going to be at resting state. You've got these, uh, these suspensory ligaments that will be causing pressure pulling on the lens. And then this is going to be important to remember. And this is the anterior chamber. You've got your vitreous humor back here and uh, so on. But focusing on the middle unit here. Um, so why do I have acetylcholine and M3 receptors? Well, it's important to remember that M3 receptors on the ciliary body are going to respond to the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is going to come and it's going to act upon the M3 receptors that will be expressed here, and that's going to cause the uh, accommodation uh, to near vision. So let's move on to the next uh, picture. So these two pictures correlate to the same thing. Um, you've got the ciliary body, which is going to be this muscle, and it's going to be expressed in the black uh, uh, muscular ring outside. You've got these suspensory ligaments, again, demonstrated by the little dashed line connecting to the lens. So remember that this picture is actually going to be this, except um, we're looking at it at a different angle. So the ciliary muscle encircles the lens. And uh, during rest, the ciliary muscle is going to relax. It's important to know that a radial muscle relaxed is going to be larger. It's, it's going to go from a constricted state to an enlarged state. Um, sphincter muscles work the same way. When you're, when you're constricting that sphincter muscle, it'll be tight, but when you loosen it, it'll be larger or rounder in diameter. Um, so we see the large circumference of the loosened ciliary body muscle. That's going to cause tension on the suspensory ligaments, and it's going to pull the lens flat. It's going to pull that lens and flatten it out. Um, and that's going to be important to remember. So if we activate the beta-2 receptors, that's going to cause the ciliary body to relax, and you'll get the lens pulled, and that's going to be good for far vision. If we see the acetylcholine act upon the M3 receptor of the ciliary body, ciliary body, ciliary body, um, we're going to see the ciliary body contract. So it's the sphincter muscle. It's going to get smaller. When that gets smaller, it's going to actually relieve some of the tension that's pulled here. Because here, when the ciliary body can, uh, relaxes, it's going to pull the lens tight. And here, when the ciliary muscle contracts, it's going to relieve all the pressure that's being held upon the suspensory ligaments. And it's going to cause the lens to form kind of a contact lens shape. Or it's going to be more rounded. That's going to be your accommodation for near vision. And again, we see here, uh, we have the larger relaxed ciliary body, and it goes into a contracted state. When it's a contracted state, it's going to take a little less pressure off of these suspensory ligaments that are attached to the lens. And the lens will, in fact, uh, shrink if we're looking at it straight on because it's rounding out instead of being pulled flat like a pancake. 